Two young girls start acting strange. Their parents are beside themselves trying to understand what could be causing their daughters this affliction. The girls would scream out in fear at objects that only they could see, and soon they would make a claim that would ripple through the village. Witchcraft. The town would panic and a trial would be held. It may sound like something from 1692 Salem, but it actually happened right here in Bethel, Ohio in 1805. Join me as we talk about the only witch trial to ever occur in the state of Ohio. Welcome back to the Least Professional channel on YouTube and welcome to Ohio Legends and Tales. Today, we are at the corner of State Route 232 and 125 in Bethel, Ohio to talk about the only recorded witch trial in Ohio history. It's 1805 and Ohio has just recently become a state and much of the area is still being settled. In the small community of Bethel, Ohio, the Hildebrand family lives not far from where we are right now. The names of the daughters seem to have been lost to time, but in many of the places that I found, they were, they were described as young women grown. So the Hildebrand sisters began claiming that they were possessed by something. They claimed that it was an evil spirit, most likely a witch. Now this evil spirit would terrorize them every night and it would make it so that they couldn't get enough sleep and they weren't able to do their chores the next day and they, they would throw fits. They would have all kinds of problems and, and claim that something was harming them, but nobody else could see what it was that was actually harming them. Now there were many methods that were used to try to get rid of this affliction. One of which was to take a large bag of Lindsay Woosley and try to capture the spirit inside of that. Once they had that bag, they took it out on the porch, chopped it up into little bits, and burned it. But that, of course, didn't rid the girls of the affliction, and they continued to suffer. When the attempts to get rid of the evil spirits failed, the girls would claim that the spirit was manifesting itself as one of their neighbors, Nancy Evans. Now, the home of Nancy Evans was actually located right behind me where the Speedway gas station now stands today. She lived alone with a black cat and she was seen as kind of a hermit, an outcast. She had a little bit of family nearby, but nobody really interacted with her a whole lot. So because Nancy Evans was suspected to be a witch, the Hildebrand family tried to avoid her and stay away from her, hoping that maybe if they just didn't interact with her, she would leave their daughters alone and all would be well. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case. When avoiding her didn't help, the Hildebrand family, the mother and the father, would actually formally accuse Nancy Evans of being a witch. Now, unfortunately for the Hildebrand family, there were no laws in place at the time in the state of Ohio dealing with witchcraft because it was seen as an archaic thing and, and there, there were no witches and it wasn't something to be concerned about. But because of this accusation being made, the town had to devise some way to test whether or not Nancy was actually a witch. So the Justice of the Peace came in and came up with an idea that he actually borrowed from Salem and originally from Europe back in the days when they did witch trials in the 1600s and before that. So this method involved taking a large scale and what they would do is on one side of that scale they would place the Holy Bible. On the other side would sit Nancy Evans and the thought was that if Nancy weighed more than the Bible she wasn't a witch but if she was actually a witch she would weigh less than the Bible because essentially the devil can bypass natural laws and would be lighter than the simple book and the word of God. And so the scale was built. It was actually built really close to Nancy's home. There used to be a little pond over here. And they put Nancy on one side, they put the Bible on the other side. And can you guess what happened? Nancy weighed more than the Bible. <laughs> she actually fell down to the ground, the Bible went up, and the entire town sighed with, sighed with relief that they didn't actually have a witch in their midst. Now, following the trial in the subsequent years, Nancy Evans and her family, because of some of the, the stigma that was kind of still stuck around them by the people in the town, they would wind up moving away to Brown County, Ohio. Uh, I couldn't find any records of them actually moving up there, and some of that might be just because of how long ago it was, and that also might be the reason why the Hildebrands themselves actually moved away, but nobody knows really where they went to after they left Bethel, Ohio. They just kind of disappeared as far as historical records are concerned. 
So had you ever heard the story of the Ohio Witch Trial? Whether you're an Ohio resident or not, I mean, everybody's heard of Salem. This one wasn't near as big and there wasn't, nobody died as a result of it, but it was still kind of a big deal for the time and for the local area. Big enough that they kept the records through at least until today. I know I personally hadn't heard of it until recently when I was looking around for Ohio tales to, to tell on the channel here. And I actually stumbled across a potential witch hunt in Ohio. And actually when I started doing the research and studying up on it, uh, I learned more about the story and it was kind of interesting. Um, but it also goes to show just how much true history has been lost throughout not just Ohio, but the country and the world. Because once we get past a certain time, most things aren't really captured you know, most everybody's day-to-day -day lives, your your day-to-day -day life, my day-to-day -day life, they, they aren't going to be captured or noted in history books unless we do something huge, historical. Um, you know, being a leader in a war or a leader of a country that goes through a crisis or something like that. Those kind of people actually get remembered. But the day-to-day -day lives of most people, even something as, as big for a small community as this was, kind of gets forgotten and shoved aside. But not all historical records are created equal. And next week, we're actually gonna be taking a look at another historical account of something that happened in Ohio that may not have happened. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and share the video, get it out there. My goal is to grow this channel a little bit and be able to tell more and more stories as we go along. I've got a, I've got a few in the pipe and ready to go. And I'm also looking for some. So if you've heard a, a legend around the state of Ohio that's kind of obscure that maybe not a lot of people know about, send it my way. Drop it down in the comments below. Let me know. And um, other than that, that's all I've got. Thank you all for watching. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.